In our previous video, we used JSON.NET and C Sharp to create a JSON feed. In this video, we're going to look at how we can filter that JSON feed. That way we're not obligated to return all of the data all of the time. First, a quick look at how our JSON appears at the moment. You see that it returns all data to us. What I want to do is say question mark and then combine name and then we'll say Paul. And I want that to only return the Potomac Paul Paul in this case. Or if I say combine name equals red, I want to only see the red bud. As it exists right now, it doesn't work that way. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the value that corresponds with the name combined name. So you notice the combined name is going to stay consistent. That's a unique identifier. It's the value that follows the equal sign that can change just as we see here in plain places. We see with the uh, JSON stream that's in plain places, I can say combined name equals oak. I get a list of oak trees. Combined name equals red. I get any plant that I have in the database that has the word red. Maple, whoops, misspelled. Uh, maple, so on and so forth, uh, that, will, that will determine the type of data that I get back. Now, by the way, this feed that we see here, uh, plainplaces.com slash pearl slash mobile, view plants JSON, uh, this is publicly available on the internet. It's a feed that I've put together. You're more than welcome to use it in your own app or while you're testing out your own application if you just need a simple JSON feed to hit. But nonetheless, back to where we were. We need to get the value that corresponds with this thing called combined name. So I copy combined name, uh, I go back to my service, and up in the page load, I'm going to say request dot query string. Now query string is an array, and uh, this array essentially represents all of the name value pairs that are available in our URL and those name value pairs follow that question mark. So we can access any of those using this query string and I can simply pass in the name of the key and that uh, with any luck will return to me uh, a value. So I can say string filter equals request dot query string uh, combined name. Okay, looking pretty good. Now we need to pass that filter to this show JSON method. So I'll simply say filter. Um, the only trick is that the show JSON method doesn't know that it needs to accept that string filter. So I need to add a parameter to this method, string filter, just like so. Now the two parts match. We know that the filter here is the data we're getting from the URL. That's going to go down to our show JSON method. Before I forget, let me wrap an if test around this to make sure that filter um, is not null. So if filter uh, not equal null, if filter is not null, then we go ahead and pass that on to our show JSON. Just a moment, I'll clean this guy up. Okay, else if it is null, open and close curly, and inside of that we're going to say uh, very similar, we'll just pass in essentially empty string. This will protect us for the first time that we load this page, just in case there's nothing in that filter. Okay, so we save. We go down now to our show JSON method and we see that we have our filter string here. And what we want to do is we just want to make sure that uh, whatever is in this filter variable is also in this plant before we add the plant to the collection. In other words, I can do an if test here and say if redbud.commonName.contains. Now contains is nice, it just means does this string on the left contain the string that I'm putting in parentheses here, which is, guess what, filter. So it doesn't have to be an exact match, it simply has to contain that term. If it does contain the term, then we add this plant to our collection of plants. Okay, so let's borrow a bit of logic there and reapply that for Paul Paul. If uh, Paul Paul dot common name, there we go, common name dot contains, there we go again, and we'll say filter, uh, then within the filter here, we say all plants dot add Paul Paul. Now you see this is somewhat brittle because I have to do the same if test for every plant that I have here because it is hard coded at this time. By the way, I'll go ahead and start uh, start debugging in Google Chrome. So you see that is a, br a bit brittle. That's not the way I would really want to do this in real life. I might use link the language interactive query. Uh, or I would use an actual collection, but for this simple demo, uh, this will work for us. So we'll give it just a moment to raise up in Chrome. And now it's loaded in Chrome. You notice the first time around it shows all plants. Let's try our new trick. 
Question mark, combined name equals Paul. Notice it only shows the Paul Paul. Okay, if I say Bud as in Red Bud, it only shows the Red Bud. If I say capital R Red, once again, it shows the red bud. If I choose lowercase r red, it shows nothing because that, that, uh, that contains is case sensitive. Nonetheless, we see it is properly working now. Just to give another visual on this, uh, allow me to snap a breakpoint. I've often said the most important thing to learn uh, when you're learning programming is learn the debugger. So uh, red, and you see my breakpoint hits. F10 to step over, I can mouse over filter and I can confirm that filter contains the word red. Okay, now filter is not null. So we go to this uh, call here where we are calling show JSON. Now, so far, I've been clicking F10 because F10 means execute this line, go to the next. But re that's called step over. Remember, F11 is step in. That means walk into this method and watch what happens. So I choose F11. And here we are in the show JSON method. We construct the red bud. And then we decide whether or not to add the red bud to the collection. Truth is, we could have probably moved this if test up a little bit more to save a bit of processing cycles. But nonetheless, does red bud contain red? Yes, it does. We add it to the collection. Now we create the Paul Paul. Does Paul Paul contain the word red? Well, not this one. So you see it skips right over the if test body here. Then F5 to continue, and sure enough, we get our result. Now you might say, okay, that's great, but do I really expect the user to type that combined name data up in the URL? And the answer is no, of course, you don't expect the user to do that. I do have an, a, another video that describes how to make a simple HTML form where you can have a like a text field and a button. The user clicks the button, whatever the user typed in the text field then becomes that combined name. It becomes that URL that we were just looking at for our JSON stream. So I won't go over that in this video because guess what? I do have an entirely separate video that covers exactly how to do that. The video is called Make a Simple HTML Form with Input, Submit, Form, and Text Tags. And it covers how to create a form that will go in. And the example that I use here is that Live Plant Places site, uh, the live feed there. It shows how to make a form that you can create where when you press search on the form, it takes your search term and it puts it in that JSON URL and it narrows down the, uh, the, the results by that. So if that's something that you want to do, just have a look at this video. So that is a quick look at how we can apply a filter to a JSON page in csharp.net Visual Studio 2017. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you very much.